Sure. I was uh, 12 and a half when he was mm. killed. I was going to school in New Delhi, which is where he spent the last several months of his life. And of course, uh, when I uh, was with him, uh, that was a time when India was becoming independent, but also India was witnessing these tremendous clashes between Hindus and Muslims. Was, there was great violence. Was he, uh, Alveda and, so I, and yeah. I have talked about this before on Martin Luther King. He knew, he knew. Yes, Didn't he, he, did. he knew. He definitely. And he was, he was not afraid, but he was afraid. Was, was Mahatma afraid? Because Jesus was. He, well, he, he certainly knew. He certainly knew that he was going to be killed. He expected to be killed. And he often uh, said that he, he asked people who met him, please pray for me, A, that I will have the courage when the moment comes, and B, that I will also have the courage to forgive those who right. kill me. I'm, I'm, One also hears, I mean, in Jesus, you know, in the prayers of, of Gethsemane, yeah. you know, take this cup from Please. me. I do not want to suffer. Right. No human does. And, and yet there's an acceptance, not, not my will, but thy will be done. All right. And I got to take a break. But right. same with Moses. Moses was saying the same thing. Who am I? What, what I, I, yeah. I'm supposed send, to send somebody no. else. Yeah, yeah not right. me. Back in just a second. of death, life persists. In the midst of untruth, truth persists. In the midst of darkness, light persists. Hence I gather that God is life, truth, light. He is love. Exercise of faith will be the safest. Where there is a clear determination, summarily, to reject all that is contrary to truth and love. You know, I find myself living at a time in America that I, I just never, ever thought, you know, the teachings of Martin Luther King, for me, um, uh, the teachings of Gandhi, uh, Moses I connected to, but usually on, you know, Good Friday or, you know, <laughs> you're watching, uh, right. Jesus I connected to, but in a different way, I never thought I'm just connecting with these guys in a much different way now. And their, their truth is so universal. Back with us now is Dr. Alveda King, niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Rabbi Daniel Lappin, founder of the American uh, Alliance of Jews and Christians, Dr. Robert Franklin, president of Morehouse College and via satellite, Professor Rajmahan Gandhi, president of Initiatives to Change International and grandson of Gandhi. So here's what I want to do. Um, I am beginning to look at Moses in it. I've, I've read the Old Testament this year in a completely different way. I mean, it's just, it's, it, to me, it's on fire right now. Same with the words of Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, so what I want to look at is, I may be going through that, but maybe other people aren't, and, and maybe other people are kind of stuck in looking at Moses as this guy who is, okay, he climbs up on a mountain, he's got the big rocks, and they made a calf, and he throws them at, and you can't relate. So let's go through each of these and show me where the revolution is of today that is similar to each of the times. Does that make sense to yes, you? Yes, absolutely. So we'll start with you, with Moses. Um, yes, well, uh, first of all, you don't necessarily have to have the physical apparatus of oppression for there to be an Egypt-like set of circumstances. Um, Egypt is essentially a spiritual oppression uh, because the, the terrible temptation of tyranny is its, its almost irresistible, seductive allure. And people yield to it even in, in situations of apparent freedom and and, uh, and, and, and luxury even, where the, the soul is, is restricted and confined. And, and what it boils down to, I think, and this is a fundamental Moses lesson, is that the, the enemy of this ultimate spiritual freedom is the ego. And to make progress, that ego has to be tamed and trained, trounced and ultimately transcended. Okay. Doctor. I think Jesus is railing against... Uh, everything that separates us from God, which is the definition of sin. And of course, he preaches a lot about sin and says the answer to that is to return to God. And love is that which reconciles us, closes the distance. So materialism, violence, uh, fear of the other, all of these things can separate us from the love of God. 
I, I think one, one other thing that's important to point out, especially in Gandhi, certainly in the case in Moses, uh, in Jesus, the fasting, the self-denial, the renunciation they practice. Uh, Dr. King did some of that, but it wasn't as pronounced, uh, certainly in Jesus and Gandhi, this radical renunciation of bodily desires and, 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 and food and, and the like. It's an interesting kind of discipline. I think that's why I was not picked to do anything. Because <laughs> it's like, food? No? <laughs> All right, let me go, let me go to uh, Rajmahan. Um, uh, tell yes. me, uh, yeah. r relate um, to um, Gandhi, have people relate to Gandhi and what he taught okay. in, a, in, a, you know, in a country where that, that is not uh, suffering from uh, colonialism. But you know, there's so many things all our countries are suffering from, from corruption, from cruelties, uh, and above all, from the division of the world into so many compartments. Uh, I think Jesus, and I'm, I believe Moses too, but I, know, I don't know enough about Moses, uh, but I know a little more about Jesus, and I know a good deal about Gandhi, and I know a fair amount about King. All these, as far as I can see, felt that all humanity was one. And one of the great oppressions of our modern world is this idea that some people in the humanity are okay and others are not okay. And this, uh, as far as uh, Jesus, Moses, Gandhi, King were concerned, all people are my people. And we should have to ask ourselves, are there some people in the world that we don't regard as our people? If we, the answer to that is yes, then I think all these four want us, would want us to make a change in our attitude. All right, so let me, let me go here, and, and may I throw you a curveball here? Um, uh, there is, uh, w Professor Gandhi just said, you know, that all people are one, um, and are, you know, we separate each other, et cetera, et cetera. Dr. Martin Luther King knew that very well. We had separate water fountains, but he still disagreed with people vehemently, I mean, there were people that he vehemently disagreed and disagreed with him. So there is a separation on thought. But what is sure. the bridge, Dr. King? For my uncle, the bridge had to be and would be today Jesus Christ, you know, the begotten, the only begotten Son of God, the love of God fully embodied in my uncle's shining star, Jesus Christ. And so that's the equalizer, that's the connector the love of God. He held on to that. And then by the example of Moses, the example of Gandhi, the models and the principles. So the equalizer, the connector is always going to be the divine love of God. And that's what helped my uncle to be willing to go to the mountaintop. Now, Jesus Christ in bodily form had not been born during the time of Moses, but the principles were there and the promise was there. So it's the really equalizer you, is the promise of love, the right, promise of that's love. That's really mm -hmm. the, it, 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 Jesus was love, mm -hmm. Moses was love, right? Well, the challenge, one of the challenges he faced, which I think is certainly something that your uncle faced as well, which is that uh, it was necessary to unify the very people you were trying to help in the first place. It's not as if they all stood up and saluted when you walked onto the scene. Right. And, and that is an enormous but challenge. But nobody did. Did, did, did uh, Mahatma Gandhi, was he recognized immediately as everybody's guy? Not at all. Not at all. And even today, there are many people who sharply disagree with him. Uh, he wouldn't mind that. Uh, he, he, of course, saw himself as an imperfect human being. And so he welcomed and he felt he needed criticism. He needed improvement. Um, but I would say that the... Uh, that for Gandhi, the common imperfections of humanity, of all of us, was a great equalizer. We all fall short. Every single human being falls short. And that is a tremendous equalizer. And that, of course, is what enables us, requires us to forgive one another. So uh, I, I would say that this, uh, the, the common imperfections of humanity was a tremendous bond uh, that, Ga that Gandhi believed in. Okay. At one point... Amen. Dr. King said that Jesus provided the theory that showed us the way of love, but he looked to Gandhi to provide the practical 
example of how to live it out in the streets during the civil rights movement. So Jesus provides theory in a sense, Gandhi provides practice. And I think that's just a wonderful wedding of uh, you know, an American Christian preacher who learned something important from a Hindu, Gandhi, in, in his practice of Christian love. This is starting to sound almost like the Black Robe Regiment. This is dangerous. People, that's, that's, that's dangerous. They start mixing all these people together and they start talking amongst themselves. Trouble! Uh, back in just a second.